recall from the mechanical energy equation examples, we always were given the inland point in which we got pressure, velocity. Then we got either in a series of processes in which we either add energy or take out energy uh, or even the friction losses right here. And eventually you got to point number two in which you got another velocity and another pressure and between point one and point two you always had a difference on height. Or maybe not a difference but you always got C2 and C1. These problems are called mechanical energy equation in application to series flow. So you could say that point A and point B are always equivalent in energy. All the left side energy equal all the outlet right side energies. So these are simple, actually they are simple to model and the only thing that we needed to do was to isolate any value and find out the other value. Sometimes we had to calculate maybe, I don't know, a height or maybe a pressure or maybe something but the idea was that we always got everything and we just needed to solve for the viral for example the pump requirements or the change in pressure the final velocity always very punctual punctual value and these are the typical examples of mechanical energy equation type 1 in series all these three types is problem are problems in series arrangement so as I told you before, that one was always solar pressure, solar pump requirement, solar height, or any given value. The flow rate was always given, the velocity was given or you could calculate it from the volumetric flow rate, and the uh, sorry, with the velocity we could either calculate or find the energy loss, which is right here. This is function of velocity. But what will happen if I give you, for example, all the piping systems, for, for instance, the pipe is an elbow, this is a tank, you get the pump, and then you finish with this. So if I tell you I got the system, I got all the diameters and all the fittings and so on, uh, the thing here is that I will not give you the volumetric flow rate, you don't know it. Actually, we want to know what is the maximum volumetric flow rate. So we cannot calculate velocities. And from this equation, if we don't have velocities, we cannot calculate this, and we cannot calculate this, and we cannot calculate this. So how can we do that? Friction cannot be calculated directly, and the only let's say approach will be let's guess random velocity so we propose a volumetric flow rate with that volumetric flow rate calculate the velocity head and the loss of energy then see if the right side if you want to learn on the friction loss pressure drops and how to calculate whatever energy loss you have in the system so for instance here you can check out in this energy loss due to friction block you will have a little review on flowing pipes such as Reynolds number, laminar flow, turbulent flow and so on. You will be able to learn how to calculate friction loss in pipes and friction loss due to fittings and valves. Now this equation equals the left side which normally in the first attempt is not true so you continue and recalculate until you get a error very small. So for example let's say you propose a velocity or a now you propose a volumetric flow rate and you calculate the left side to be, I don't know, maybe 3. The right side you calculate this and you have 5. Well, you can see that 3 and 5 are not the same. But let's say you continue doing that until you get a volumetric flow rate in which the left side gives you maybe 15.5 and the right side gives you 15.3. So I would say this is definitely a good answer and the volumetric flow rate you propose is right. So that's the first approach on the type number two in which you have no volumetric flow rate. Now for type number three, let's say we have a system but we don't know the, the sizes of the diameters. So even though the volumetric flow rate is given, 
we cannot calculate the velocities because we don't know the size. So how can we solve that? That's pretty similar to this. If we don't have velocity, we don't have velocity heads and we cannot calculate the loss of uh, friction. So once again we're going to propose in this time we're going to propose piping size instead of volumetric flow rates. So once we calculate maybe the diameter of a pipe, you calculate the area of a pipe and divide Q in A, you will get one velocity. So with this velocity you can plug here and here, solve for the left side, solve for the right side. Recall that with the velocity you need to calculate the Reynolds number and whatever things you need to calculate friction, you need them right here. And once again we're going to solve for the left side, maybe it's 10 and the right side is 20. Well, that definitely is not the answer. So you do and reiterate, uh, recalculate until you get something that makes sense. So, for example, you propose a diameter that has a velocity that here tells you it's 10. You propose the diameter and also here is 10.2. Well, that's pretty near, so you could say that was the actual diameter you were finding or the diameter you propose satisfies this volumetric flow rate and this set of parameters. So that's the idea. I don't want to get on into more detail, but that's the idea. When you have the velocities of, or you can calculate velocities, everything is easy and it's type number one. When you don't have volumetric flow rate, you cannot calculate velocities, so you need to guess volumetric flow rates and calculate velocities. And when you don't have the size of the diameter, you cannot calculate the velocities, so you need to propose the sizings and so on. This was a free preview. If you want to get full access, go to my incompressible flow course. The link is in the description of the video. You will get all access. Not only that, you get a very straightforward, uh, user-friendly interface. So, for instance, you were analyzing or studying pumps. You have it here, the pump block. And then you have the sections. If you were, for example, studying the types of pumps, you can go here. And you have all the classes right here. Not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these. So for instance, if you were studying positive displacement pumps, the video is right here. If you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.